right, so this is uh, Parks Rec Public Spaces Committee meeting for December 17th, 2020. Um, our agenda is as follows. We have our two standing items on our agenda, citizen-led projects and our request to address the committee. Um, our third item is a bike walking path in the West Norwood from Wasson Way discussion with Tri-State Trails. Um, I wasn't able to reach out to them until a little later, so I'm not exactly sure if they're going to be able to make it or not. So my thought is if they don't, we can push this to the next meeting okay. if everybody kind of agrees on that. Um, number four is potential to acquire the Richard E. Linder YMCA building. And number five is 2021 Parks and Recreation Capital Improvement Plan. Does anybody have any requests to amend right now? Or? That's great. All right, so we'll go on to our... First agenda item, Citizen with Projects. I do have an update that I'm going to read from uh, Mary C. Miller. Um, they're not able to make it tonight, so she asked that I would read kind of an update on what they have going on. <clears throat> so, Nora Together is hosting another hot chocolate coffee and hike on January 1st at 1, 1 p.m. This time we will meet at the entrance to Wasson Way on Montgomery Road and hike from the pike. Donna Lake reported that the park audit is ready to be put on a spreadsheet. One goal is to develop a baseline of needs for every park, such as trash cans, picnic tables, etc. And the next park communications group meeting that they, held, they hold will be held on the week of January 11th at 5.30 p.m. on Zoom. Um, and if anybody kind of is interested in that, I can send out a link when, when I get those so people can hop on and kind of hear what's going on and throw some suggestions their way. Um, are, so, you gonna, are you going to uh, put it on a particular website? or? No, so it's a link that goes out for uh, people to join and kind of join into the Zoom call. Um, and, and Mary C. Miller sends me that so I can send it to the rest of you guys if you guys oh, would like. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's um, Nora Together and Mary C. Miller's update that she asked me to read. Um, now we have Pastor Sonny James would like to update us on a project he's working on. Yeah, so first of all, let me just say I'm, I'm really thrilled and excited uh, for Norwood, Ohio, because um, for a while, a long while, you know, one of the things that, that I used to really get frustrated with is great people would have great ideas and great vision, uh, but what you would often hear is if you come into this community and you have a great project, what you often hear is, oh, have you talked to so-and-so? Or, oh, you should let them do that. <laughs> or something to that nature. And what it, for years, it just really doesn't open the door for the little guy to come in and to really be able to have an equal uh, seat at the table with equal voice. And tonight, I'm just so pleased that I've been able to partner um, with Elevations Enrichment uh, who's been in for five years and awesome residents like John Moore and some awesome community groups like Norwood Together and ASAP and some of the other uh, and other residents that just want to see uh, people coming together on a common ground working together and I'm excited because our grant writer Deborah Samuels who is a uh, she's part of the governor's whatever, whatever, so she gets access to all grants statewide or even sometimes nationally. And so she'll oftentimes drop a bug and say, hey, I think elevations would be great for this grant, and uh, like the MVK grant, and, and then this grant. And she sent me another one for LISC, I think something coming up um, in a few months. And so the partnership has really uh, began to take a different look but what I'm excited about guys today is that the executive director Kirsten James uh, is being given an opportunity to be the lead uh, organization in our community and that we have the support and collaboration from other nonprofits and other community members that have really tackle this. So I'm going to introduce her real quick. And she can just share with you about the grant and then um, I want to just briefly share with you all the strategy that we're using on this grant which I personally think um, 
gives us a tremendous um, advantage in this particular grant. They're only going to award seven grants nationwide. So although the opportunity is real uh, minimum, I think with our partnerships and what everybody's bringing to the table, it really gives us a really unique perspective because it actually allows us to tie in the fact of where we've come from as a community to where now today it's, it's living proof that people can work together. So I'm grateful for you all giving us an opportunity to make the presentation. So I'm going to first introduce my lovely, lovely, and the Executive Director of Elevations in Richmond, Kirsten James. Then we'll get John. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm very grateful um, to be a part of this project. It's a Safe Routes to <coughs> Parks grant um, that we are working on. Um, I'm happy to be collaborating with um, different organizations, as Pastor James said, in the community. Um, I want to thank ASAP Norwood um, for providing some data for us to that will help in our application process, as well as Norwood together. Um, and John will be presenting uh, a part of what we are um, working on for the grant. But the, the main goal of the grant is really to um, provide more accessibility um, to parks within our community um, for everyone. Uh, and to also address some of what our country has been dealing with as far as rec racial reconciliation and things of that nature. So we're trying to incorporate all of that into um, this particular grant to make it more accessible to um, all of our neighbors, um, and particularly neighbors who are of color. But um, it will be a safe routes um, project for everyone to access and also getting the input of our youth. So um, with the help of Elevations, we, we bring that aspect um, to to this particular grant as well. So we are very grateful to be collaborating with everyone um, in the community. So I want to thank you all for, for this opportunity to speak and share with you. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Yeah, and if it would be all right with you all, I've got a computer over there just to kind of bring to life the, what we're talking about. Absolutely. That's right. what we got you set up, ready to go. should be on the same channel. If it's not, it's the input button on the mm -hmm. remote. So uh, as Mrs. James was speaking about, uh, the idea is safe routes to parks. And the, the genesis of this goes back to um, some conversations that I've had with Mr. Gabbard, um, some different things uh, around, um, you know, just a curiosity, my own curiosity around uh, biking and trying to make one plus one equals three kind of opportunities for Norwood. Um, and I'll, I'll try to bring that to life a little bit here. So this really kind of started out as, um, can you guys see that okay? Do you need me to turn it, Chris? I, I can see it fine. Okay. Yeah, so this kind of started out um, with me just wondering, uh, you know, with, with Watson Way coming in, and you know I'm a resident uh, about two three minutes from there. Just kind of got wondering, you know, how could we make it easier for people to get to this great community asset that we have? Uh, and frankly, didn't really pay anything for. Um, you know, there's a, a, a private group kind of developing that. But um, so if you see here along the, the the purple line represents where the current Norwood chunk is, and then the uh, the like extension that's being discussed up the west side of, of Ward 1. If you go over there on, uh, I think it's Crosley, you can see the train tracks that, that cut right behind HCDC and ultimately go up to uh, Millcrest Park. And so, you know, what we, what we were talking about doing was uh, just kind of exploring um, where, where could roads uh, even accommodate any sort of bike-friendly features. Uh, and for the most part, if you think about roads in Norwood, the typical one's about 30 feet wide. Uh, so that would be like an, an Ivanhoe, uh, 
most of Ward 4 streets are, are 30 feet wide, Hudson, Monroe, etc. Um, so I just kind of got on this kick of like, well, let's, let's see where it could even fit. And, and then from there, I kind of cobbled together this idea of um, how could we build an intelligible map that actually you know, got you to different key features in the city. So the, the kind of first leg connecting to the current you know, opening of Lawson Way would be this blue line that would go uh, up Floral, across Smith, and then towards the playing card development. Uh, you know, trying to connect two of the biggest things happening right now, the introduction of the trail, and then the, uh, the U.S. playing card site. Uh, you know, coincidentally, that takes you past uh, Doral Field, you know, one of, one of our parks, and then uh, the Sharpsburg Elementary School. So a couple of key kind of community assets there. Um, looking at you know, take it across to Ward 1, uh, that, that corridor of Williams west of Forest all the way over to the boundary is, is wide enough to accommodate that. You know, again, this, this cuts in front of the school, uh, this time in Williams Ave. And, you know, with us being a, a, a non-busing district, you know, kind of makes sense to promote easy pathways for, for folks to get to the different schools. Um, and then just, you know, kind of following the scent, uh, you know, there's there's this little stretch here of Hopkins that kind of goes down and, and connects with Millcrest. Um, and I'll just kind of keep, you know, bringing these to life here. Uh, this, this bit of Hopkins is, you know, sufficiently wide as well. Uh, there's a little chunk up by um, Sherman that's, again, right by the schools and, and connects over to Victory Park. And then... Um, you know, looking to looking to try to bring this north of the lateral. Uh, you know, it's un unfortunately uh, south of the lateral tends to be the older part of Norwood, uh, whereas north of the lateral tends to be a little bit more uniform in its street width. Most of which are pretty narrow. So really, the only two uh, corridors that would get you up into Ward Four at all that that would be wide enough uh, would either be Section or Carthage. Uh, and so in this instance, that kind of gets you uh, up in the Hunter Ballpark. Uh, and then I'll, I'll illuminate two more parts, um, getting east on Norwood Ave, um, that takes you, you know, from that section connector over to uh, Waterworks. And then last but not least, just kind of tying it all together, finishing the, the loop, so to speak. There's two kind of interesting opportunities. One, uh, Mr. Gabbard was actually the one that brought this one to my attention, is out the, the backside of the playing car development, there is a, uh, like a utility road that swings down by Public Works, and then there's a tunnel that goes under down to Waterworks. Um, so he, I guess he had approached Wade, who was supposed to be here, about that possibility of, of trying to activate that, uh, make it easier for the, the playing card and, and board three folks to get over to Waterworks there. And, um, and then the other part would, would just be to kind of close the loop over on the, the west side here, um, is this Allison connector. Allison's not more than 30 feet wide, uh, so that's sort of the one little uh, wrinkle in, in time here. But, uh, you know, overall the idea is just that, you know, we would have something that, uh, you know, not on every road, a lot of these are, are, are really residential uh, areas, but on some of the more neighborhood arteries that we would have something that could uh, connect. And so, um, you know, with, with uh, the Jameses and uh, the other entities that they mentioned, applying for this grant just kind of as an exploration to say, you know, we don't know what this might be, we don't know what the specific implementation is, but it's more of a planning kind of grant, and we hope that we could uh, use it to do the fact-finding necessary uh, to maybe bring this to life in, in something that would promote uh, walking, biking, and ultimately, um, you know, those things are, are egalitarian, if you will, you know, good for people of all classes, races, etc., just to promote that mobility. So. Um, I know I just kind of threw a lot at you, but hopefully that's intelligible in some way. So it, I can't really see that well from here, and I'm sure people at home can't really see that that good either. The vertical purple line going up the screen is that the the r railroad tracks there we're talking about the possible bike walking path. So that's um, uh, so that is uh, if you look at the like the original Boston Way plans, that is part of what they intend to develop. Yeah. is to, to bring that down and connect it to um, the, the part that's parallel to Dana that, 
you know, is already built out or in the process of being built out. But basically, it would bring um, from Millcrest sort of down the west side of Ward One yeah. and connect. So you know, all of this continues to evolve, but. Uh, yeah, that, that vertical purple line over on the west side is is that Ward 1 branch of Blossom Way. Yeah. Um, so what you're showing here is, is in, a, in a sense a, a connected sort of bike route around the city. Are, are you envisioning, is it, are, is it bike lanes on the roads or is it, you know, signs just indicating that biking is happening here? We've got the extra width there, which provides a little bit of added safety. How do you see that yeah, happening? And, and I don't I don't have an answer. Okay. Um, you know, this is, I, I just see these arteries as kind of the, the canvas. You know, we don't know exactly what we're going to paint yet, but um, in, in, different, in different iterations, it might look like uh, what are called sharrows, like sort of the arrows that say share the road and there's a little bicycle and that kind of promotes it from a wayfinding perspective. Uh, in some instances, it, it probably would be wide enough to have that designated like four foot um, paint job. Right. You know, so you'd essentially have a parking lane, you know, the four foot paint job and then the center line. Right. Um, so I, I have I have no skin in the game of what it precisely looks like, but I think that, uh, you know, just sort of uh, ex exploring that these corridors are wide enough to accommodate some kind of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would say that some may be wide enough and some you really have to look into, yeah. <clears throat> such as Norwood Avenue, mm -hmm. creating a four-foot lane with parking or whatever maybe That may be impossible due to truck traffic <clears throat> going in and out of certain businesses, as well as Williams Avenue from Montgomery to um, Carter right, um, the because of there. UDF. I mean that's that's the only th that's the only issue I see with some of the streets is, you know, living here so long I kind of know where everything goes and. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's I mean that's something I guess would be in the fact finding. If if I could, um, John did a beautiful job as always. Um, as he mentioned, you know. It's kind of a beginning and a start, and um, one of the things I wanted to mention that Mary C. Uh, had mentioned in one of our collective meetings, which I thought was an interesting point, was uh, she specifically mentioned Ward 4. She says, well, you know, what are we doing for Ward 4? And so as we continue to kind of sit down with John and others, and I do want to say to the community at whole, though, this is a tremendous opportunity, Norwood, for all of you who have ideas. You know, this is a format where you can actually be involved uh, on whatever level. We want to embrace all energies, all wisdom, just like John. Uh, I mean, I, could, I can't even see those streets up there. But one of the things that we want to do is we want to, at each of the parks, um, we want to provide a template of a map. This is part of the strategy in our grant because we surveyed about 40 people and asked them, hey, where's Hunter Park? Or hey, where's this? And they go, huh? What? They have no clue that we have 11 parks. And then we realized, uh, Mary C., John and I, we realized there are three additional uh, we, we call them some other name, but it, it's a shame when people in our community don't really know. So part of the plan is to actually, as you see some of those uh, uh, markers there, is to actually highlight so that residents, first part of accessibility is awareness. So they need to know where the parks are. So on the map, and, and again, we still have a lot of work to do. This is just the beginning part of, of the uh, proposal, but we plan to put up uh, maps in all of the um, um, safe spaces, parks, um, recreation areas, our schools. we got to work that piece out, but we want to put up a map. The other part that makes this proposal so unique, guys, and why we, we pray and hope that the parks and recreation and public spaces team really jumps on board and supports this is because moving from our past into our future at each of the park we want to construct just a miniature three three and a half foot bridge that just kind of with a unique design from the architect 
to show how the first part of our bridge has a little um, base on the beginning of the bridge that's gray or dark, but each step moving to that three, three and a half foot, the bridge lights up and gets brighter. So it's, it'll show our way of, as a community, a lot of perception. We've got a beautiful community, but a lot of perception some, with some communities is negative or dark. So we want to show that Norwood, it may have started that way. It may have had that negative, but look at what we're moving to, which at the end of the, each bridge, there'll be a place where our, our engineers and whatnot and, and our team will, will design beautiful templates that will bridge out from the bridge. And th what that does is give the community an opportunity to have community buy-in to say, hey, I want to support that. What is the next brick? Or what is that next little template going to look like? What is that? Is that going to be another flower? Is that going to be, uh, you know, a tree limb? Or, oh, it's only a tree limb. It needs a flower. I need to help. I need to get involved. So we're really excited about that. But then the third piece, and, and John, you did a wonderful, wonderful job, my brother. The third piece is really just embracing what's already here, what's already being presented, what's already been worked on. Not trying to, with Kirsten uh, leading this, you know, not trying to reinvent the wheel. And I think with more partnerships coming up, and that's why I need, you know, I really want you all to help lead the way to tell the residents in Norwood, this is a project to where the children can come up and say, my voice matters. Hey, I, I, you know, I added that little piece or I gave them this suggestion. We really want to let this be a template of what we can be as a community raised, you know, moving forward. So it's, John said it perfectly, we don't have all the pieces. This grant is $12,500. We've got some infrastructure we've got to work on. We, we need your help as a committee. Uh, I have to say that Michael Gabbard, has uh, provided a letter of support. That was one of the requirements. Uh, we've got some other city folks that are already saying, hey, Pastor, we're with you, whatever you need. But my prayer tonight, the grant goes in tomorrow, but my prayer is that this committee will say, hey, this is a worthwhile project uh, for our city, and we also want to jump on the bandwagon and support the efforts of Elevations, being the lead of it, along with all of the other residents and all the other beautiful organizations and committees and departments. And that's why we came tonight, so you would understand our three-point plan, showing maps throughout areas. And if you see on, on his map, there are streets there. So um, we want to show accessibility and the safest ways to get there. And then we want to have something that leads us to our future. And so that's where the bridges come in. And then the third part is, which I really love, just connecting, I think uh, we've got a gentleman, Wade, that I guess was supposed to be here tonight as well. We haven't connected with him, but we are open to every entity. We want everyone to know that they are just as important as Elevations, as Norwood Together, as ASAP, as us as community members. Everyone matters and everyone has a seat at the table here. So um, if you don't have any other questions, I'll sit down. But we really want you to support this. We really want you to look at this more than just parks. Again, there are only seven awardees nationwide. But I think as John, Mary C., and all of us, they met with our board, our attorney, and our grant writer. And uh, we're really excited about this opportunity. And you have to be a 501c to do it. So thank God we, we have uh, our program. So. And I, I want to say that one of the things I'm really excited about with the possibility of it is it's not just connecting the parks, but it, we're, we're connecting our major assets, like Mr. Moore said, some of the newer, bigger things that are coming to the city. Yes. We're promoting that growth and success. Absolutely. And it's also taking the opportunity to go by the schools. Mm -hmm. And yes. to me, that's something huge because we are a walking district. Uh, being an employee of the schools, it's, you know, we know, I know kids personally that walk every day, and it's like, Kind of freaks me out. I wouldn't let my own kids walk. You know, I walk to school myself, but you know, I'm, I'm not going to let my kids walk to Williams from here right now. You know, I just don't <laughs> trust it. I grew up walking to my school. Yeah, but and one thing I would like to to point out, and maybe you know, if you guys are looking at the map and possible areas, is I know being at Sharpsburg, a lot of our kids live in Ward One in West Norwood. So something I was going up Sherman, connecting that kind of going past there, turning by Cream Whip and all that would be pretty cool to have. For them, because I know a lot of a good majority of them come from uh, West Norwood, so that would be something to maybe look at in the future. And 
kind of try to add in. But I love it because of that. I love it because it's the the, the parks are. It's a way to find all the parks, like you said. New residents coming in, maybe don't know where all our parks are. Maybe they're going to go out on a walk or a bike ride and go check out tour the parks. Yeah. You know, I think it's I think it's a great idea, and I I would love to have a letter from us going in to support this if everybody else feels that that's something they would like to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not commenting. Okay. Okay. Well, we're for it. So, great. So, guys, we're excited. We'll be back on a regular basis. Um, but, again, I just want to, before I sit down, I want to just say to the residents of Norwood, I'm personally excited because this gives the everyday average child walking to Sharpsburg or to Williams an opportunity to say wow with these type of initiatives I actually can get involved and I don't have to come under anybody I can actually lead it and they will support me and so this whole collaboration and partnership is an example of that and I really want to say again publicly Mary C I thank God for her patience with me and just continuing not to give up on me and working on saying, Pastor, we're going to work together. I don't care what it takes or how long it takes. And through that relationship, uh, one last thing, and I'll sit down. Holly Johnson's with Xavier University. She's excited as well. We've been doing a lot of work with the Xavier students. And uh, her and Sister Kirsten are working on some, some new innovative ways to keep the students involved. They're in, involved, so we want to plan some of the events that we've done to bring students to the park to appreciate that little three-foot thing and just say, hey, let's walk into our future and let's participate in our future. God bless you all. If you don't have any other questions, that's great. Please support, stay in contact, reach Sister Kirsten if you like, or myself, and uh, we're here, or you know any of the other collaborators as well. I have a quick question, actually. Yes, sir. Um, it's probably because I missed it. It, what is the name of the grant and does this project have a name or an umbrella? Thank you. So we've kind of, our board uh, met and so because it, it does do more than just connect the bike trails and all of that, we've come up with the name Connecting Norwood, Ohio. We want to have like a map like that in the mm -hmm. background, backdrop, and then it says um, trails and community, safe trails and community. So that's our theme going after this grant, connecting Norwood, Ohio. Um, we already have a, a t-shirt company that's going to produce the t-shirts for us so that residents, children, everybody can just wear a, hey, connecting, a, connecting Norwood, Ohio. And that's, that, that's really even more than just the parks. That's really saying, you know, I'm jumping on board. There's positive things happening and I can actually be a part and lead one of those things maybe. So, Thank you. Uh, it's what it's safe parks to grant. Uh, it's safe routes to parks, I'm sorry. It's been a long day. Did that answer your question? Perfect. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Thanks. All right, so that is uh, the conclusion of our, fir our first agenda item, citizen-led projects. Uh, I want to reiterate, if anybody has any projects that they're working on that they want to bring to the committee, uh, this is a standing agenda item that we're going to allow citizens to come up and do that, be heard, ask for advice, assistance, even just to get their stuff out there to be heard and, and to support the community. So anybody that has anything they want to bring up here like that, more than welcome. Email me, email the whole committee, um, get it out there and come and speak. So. And with that, we'll move on to the second item is a request to address committee if there's any other requests that are not on the agenda items if not we'll move on to number three is the bike path in the west north from Watson Way discussion with Tri-State Trails um, if it behooves everybody I'd like to push that to the next meeting since yeah, there's not a representative and I don't want to get into it without them here And that'll bring us to our fourth item on the agenda: is the potential acquire Richard E. Linder YMCA building. Um, Councilman Bonzal has brought this to my attention. He invited me to um, a meeting with some of the members that he's going to speak about, um, and he referred this to our committee and, and council meeting. And he asked to come tonight and give us kind of a little update on what's going on, what the potentials are, 
and kind of what we're looking at with this process. Great. Uh, thank you very much, uh, our Parks and Recreation Committee. Uh, so, uh, and I appreciate you, Mr. Kelch, for uh, putting this on the agenda. So it's completely my fault that the, y is not, the YMCA is not here tonight. I just flubbed that one over to making sure that they were here. I'll make sure, though, if we do want to have them here at a future meeting, uh, if you all want to do that, that uh, we'll make sure that they're here. So uh, my blame there. Uh, so uh, there has been some progress since our last uh, council meeting and uh, since we uh, had this scheduled. Uh, so we're meeting with them tomorrow with the law department. So uh, somebody from the city administration. Uh, the assistant law director, myself, and then uh, representatives from the Y. But uh, we're basically going to talk about just what the uh, some kind of a transfer of the asset could look like. So basically, what acquiring the Y could look like. Um, it's not the construction plan. You know, we don't have not, none of that stuff together. There's a lot of decisions that will be, need to be made, and I'll talk about those in just a second. But and council will have to eventually like uh, uh, move, basically make a decision whether they want to do it or not. I mean, this is ultimately going to be a council call because I think that council has to agree to acquiring the property, I would think. But who knows, there's a lot of things I thought council had to do, so uh, we just don't know. So anyways, um, from I'll just kind of talk about some of the like decision points that have to be made or, or items that need to be covered on the capital side. And basically, feel free to interrupt me as they go along, uh, you know, if you have questions about something, but just kind of letting you all know kind of what's being thought about. Uh, first, the building is not ADA accessible uh, at all. So there's no ramp to get into the building. There's not. There's no way to uh, get between the floors other than stairs. And so, if this is going to be, you know, a medium-term to slash long-term kind of community center for the city, then uh, it's got to be ADA accessible. And it's got to be accessible to all. So uh, that's priority, I guess, number one in figuring out how that accessibility could work. Uh, you know, we think that we can put a ramp to get into the building, but the question will be where does an elevator go? Likely it's going to have to go on kind of the exterior of the building at some point, uh, go up and down. They make things that aren't elevators that are called more lifts that are like smaller. That uh, could also be an option, but um, that, all of that's kind of being looked at. The city has somebody looking at that actually at the current community center building just for comparison's sake and uh, this building. So. Uh, second, uh, we've compiled a list, or at least Debbie Simpson uh, at the Senior Services, uh, she's compiled a list of all of the current uses at the Community Center. And thankfully, they've all, they're have all they all relatively compatible. We have not reached out to every single, like we haven't, they have, nobody's reached out to all of them at this point. A few of them, yes, like the Noid Historical Society, but um, know that that's going to be coming, that there will be, you know, some kind of input session to make sure that everybody's kind of, you know, there's not even huge red flags. Uh, the big difference, though, would be that there wouldn't be like individual rooms for everybody at the new community center. You, there's multi-purpose areas, and then there's storage rooms. So people would have access to storage, like the Boy Scouts, if they want to put all, some of their stuff up, right? Then they could get it out for their meetings. But there wouldn't be the actual, their own room that they lock and they don't use it the other five nights or six nights of the week. So uh, that's just going to be one change. I think that can be over, overcome just by the fear fear. The, sh the fact that we're going to have rooms that don't have leaking and stuff all through them and that rooms that are, the, the multi-purpose room on the third floor at least is bigger than uh, most of the classrooms that we have. Um, the the other two exceptions of just of the compatibility, so one of them is going to be the Nor Norwood Historical Society. This is one where I think we're all going to have to put our heads together for. Uh, so they've got about, I think, a 30 foot by 30 foot space. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been to the, Nor the archive room at the community center, but for those that have, you know that it's pretty full right now and that there's a lot of wonderful things there. And they would be one use that really wouldn't be able to move into the new building. There's not that much storage space to have a, to really have a spot for them. However, uh, work is being done to try to identify other spaces. Uh, one of those spaces, I might have talked to you about this, Mr. Kelch, but uh, one space could be at the Waterworks Pool building on that lower level. So there's doors that kind of face the stadium there. And uh, I think it used to be a rec room at one point. Uh, not sure, but essentially though, there's some space down there, although it's not in really great condition right now. There's just a lot of junk that's in there, so uh, essentially that needs to be cleaned up. But there, we're going to kind of look to see if potentially that could kind of be retrofitted to allow uh, them to use that space. But I mean, if anybody has other ideas on space for the Historical Society, we were actually looking for a bigger than 30 foot by 30 foot room just because they're already busting at the seams. So. Uh, if there's other space or other ideas, definitely like you know let myself and Tom Perry know, um, or even Mr. Kelch know, so that we can kind of all consider that. 
Um, the other item is the Citizens on Patrol room. So that room has more, you know, I guess, uh, cultural significance, right? Because they've kind of redone that room to make it look like kind of an old police station. And it looks really nice. Uh, that would be another one that I would th say that likely would not be able to move over to the to the YMCA. But the actual Citizens on Patrol, their meeting can still happen at the new one, but uh, they wouldn't have that room. So there's going to be just discussions to have on what that looks like. So Is that who they're talking about going to the police academy, or is that something different? They could, uh, I have not heard a discussion on that. I mean, a lot of that stuff is kind of not built in, but I mean, you know, a lot of it's... I mean, there's definitely like an old jail, like an old cell that's in there that I think could be moved. And of course, there's like some furniture and stuff. Uh, but it's just something that's going to have to be talked about. I mean, that is just one negative. So there's not like a plan to, to mitigate it at this point. And, uh, yeah. Eric. Uh, yeah. Um, do they have to move? Like, is there a world where you could still move most or dang near all of these groups or use? to the new building and retain some of the other spaces or rejig what's already there is or i guess what's the overarching like goal I should it sounds like it's to a limit move out and then do something probably yeah so there's a couple things that could happen i would say the the least desirable option would be to operate two spaces long term uh so the overall goal would be to not have that be a city run asset that is being used as a community space uh, there's, I mean, there's options that could happen at that space. I would say the most likely thing that would want to happen initially is, I mean, once everything is moved or out, we've mitigated everything, which probably wouldn't happen until the end of 2021 or early 2022, um, is that potentially the city could put like an uh, RFP out to see like a request for proposal out to see, you know, what would somebody want to use the building for, the space for, uh, and is there any like viable options? And then, you know, the city could work with them uh, through, uh, there's different entities that like help with community development stuff that uh, I think HCDC might do it or there could be a land, the land bank of the county but there's definitely entities that the city could kind of move it through to allow that to happen and allow it to not have to just be auctioned off or like the city could like look at creative ways for it to be it could be like artist studios could be and it could be a lot of things that it could be uh, but hopefully what the goal is not to have two community centers essentially so. and, and the presumption I suppose is the YMCA is just a far superior building for the overall. Is that right? That's why we want to want to do it. Yeah, and, and I, I said this during the meeting we had is um, so when we went to the Saney building or the current rec center building, um, it was kind of a hey, this is open, let's move this here, and I, I'm pretty sure it was, it was a long time ago. It was way better shape then probably. But that building needs significant updates. It was mm -hmm. never outfitted to be a rec center. It was a school. My dad went to school there in grade school when he was 62. You know, I mean, it was never meant to be a rec center. And I think for the last couple decades, it was just kind of like going, hey, we got it. We're Making here. it work sort of thing. I mean, there's such a small percentage of it that's being used for the rec center. Yeah. I it's just not really feasible. And I think we can look at... Well, can we update that? Because we, we just did a new basketball court there. We spent money there, obviously, in the roof a little bit ago. But it's like, do we want to put all our money in that basket and have a building fixed up that's not really a great spot for a rec center? Or build a brand new one? It's a multi-million dollar project, and we could, that's an avenue we could look at. But you know, right now, it's not really feasible. Mm -hmm. Or we have this opportunity where this building, which is... A rec center. A rec center, yeah. private rec center, coming online that needs some repairs. There's probably something that's going to be needed to get the building, so there's going to be overhead costs. But the repair, doing the repairs there, I think this is just my perspective is it's going to be money better spent in the long run because it is set up as a rec center. It does have those kind of amenities we need, and we can transfer to make work. And I think that's that's where I'm coming from, and so I would say, yeah, it's kind of a superior, much superior, much superior building. I understand. No, it's well said. Thanks. No, no, yeah, it's it's a great question. Uh, so there's going to be other. So just kind of keeping on the capital front right now, there will be some other items that we need to look at for the operating. But uh, we also need to examine. So right now, there's an indoor pool and an outdoor pool. So. I mean, both of them are somewhat dated. The outdoor pool, I think, is newer. It actually, I think Donna Lake actually chaired the 
uh, fundraising committee to actually build the outdoor pool when that happened. I don't know if it was in the 80s or the 70s, but um, it, which is pretty kind of cool to think about. Uh, but anyway, so she actually probably got mad. It's probably the 80s or the 90s. I mean, not the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely sometime later. Uh, so anyways, I just don't know when it was. But essentially though, we need to decide whether we're going to keep uh, either of the pools. Uh, so, you know, their idea is that you could fill in uh, the outdoor pool and you know, maybe put a playground there, some other space there. It could be a splash pad, although if we're talking about splash pad at Victory, I don't know who's talking about what. I mean, I just have no idea. So it's really on other people mm -hmm. to kind of figure that out. That's not an urgent decision. Uh, but the indoor pool though, you know, that's no, there's no other indoor pool in Norwood right now. And so um, it would kind of, you know, be unfortunate to lose that. The Y has kind of uh, transitioned indoor, an indoor pool at another facility. I think you were at the meeting, you were talking about that. But yeah. they've trans trans transitioned it to a dance studio, like think like a ballerina studio or something. So essentially there's some structures that they put into in the pool and they built a floor structure on top. So kind of neat. They said it was very creative and it's really solid. And uh, Yeah, and they said it was a better co cost opportunity as well yes exactly exactly so there's options there but like again no, there's no decisions have been made I'm just letting you all know the things that have to be thought about and, and honestly before they can those things can be decided and you're, you're this committee needs to really be engaged and uh, uh, your all's opinion we need to get your all's opinion in the community uh, the other thing is there's exercise equipment that's there currently so we've got like exercise rooms and so we've asked them to you know not get rid of the equipment yet but that potentially we could want that uh, so the question is, though, do we want to have that available for the for citizens? I would think I would think we would want to try to have some kind of process, maybe some reduced hours, could be like 15 hours a week that we have kind of open for exercise. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure what the model that looks like, but I think it's, it would be pretty nice to have that open for our citizens or have a some kind of a model yeah. for them to be able to come and exercise at a cost that's probably much cheaper than going and getting a membership at um, someplace else. Uh, the gymnasium, so as many of you all might know, the gymnasium was converted some three years ago or so, or four years ago, to a uh, gymnastics facility. So that was kind of like a last ditch effort to try to kind of save the Y. I mean, they were trying to bring new life into it. Uh, and it, you know, they did have uh, gymnastic stuff enrolled, but it still wasn't really what they needed when it comes to, especially this year with COVID, um, when it comes to kind of keeping it sustainable. I mean, it's lost money, and I'll, I'll kind of let me segue real quick to that. So they said it has lost money for years. Like the, this building doesn't make money, but normally, and this is how it kind of works at Wise throughout the the Wise systems throughout the country, is that when you have the more suburban, modern, big facilities, those make additional money besides what it takes to run them, and so that operating money that, they, that those places make can then subsidize the more inner city, smaller, older facilities. But this year is kind of thrown a wrench into everything because those facilities really aren't operating and they're losing money themselves. And so that model just doesn't work. So they're already kind of looking at what the future of this facility was, but COVID really kind of accelerated it. So that's kind of why the the why closed. It's really just more, you know, just not having operating dollars. And they said it's very hard for, I mean, that why is probably half the size that a why needs to be to really operate profitably when it comes to all the programs and stuff they can offer. And the location being kind of, off the main thoroughfare, you know, is also a deterrent for it. Okay, so the gymnasium though. So it was the gymnastics. Uh, so the basketball goals are gone, but they do have basketball goals that they believe are the ones from that uh, the facility. So we're going to get those back and those can presumably be installed. And the cool thing is the city right now actually does not own a full-size basketball court. So we depend on the school district anytime that we want, you know, for rec facilities or whatever. And the school district is a fantastic partner. But it would be really great for the city to own a full-size basketball court uh, and have that available for recreation. So it's a major advantage to this facility over the, the other one. And I know that we did do the flooring a couple of years ago. I mean, I was a big spearhead, or it was last year actually. I mean, I spearheaded that, like pushing Mr. Gears heavy to make sure we got that done. But we had to do that because there were nails that were coming up while kids were playing. And I've heard that referees had to like go and like hammer in nails at halftime and stuff because they knew there were problem ones that kept coming up. So. It just it had to be done, so I would just consider that a sunk cost. It's like for the students, we, kids, we had to do it, but uh, and also this opportunity, we had no idea this was coming. So. Yeah, and, and also this is kind of like going back to that point of hey, do we really want to keep spending money there, yeah. or just kind of stop the bleed and transfer those funds and efforts and energy somewhere much much better? That's a great point. Yeah, no, I, I thought that point you made was really good. Um, 
So there are two racquetball courts right now there, uh, which I remember uh, in college I would play racquetball a lot at our rec center. But um, you know, it's a game that's kind of like not a lot of people play it, but there are there. So the question would be, one of, one of the courts is currently used for an exercise. Like they had just have some exercise equipment in it. It's like an overflow of the exercise room. The other one is actually used for racquetball. So you know, the, it could be converted to be more of like a, some kind of a studio space or something for classroom space, uh, or it could be kept as racquetball. I mean, uh, the options there. Uh, so they actually. There's some space that would actually be really good for childcare, and we talked about this a little bit in our meetings, but not something I think we'd really look at too early. But the question is, too, do we want to, does the city want to partner with anybody to potentially offer any kind of childcare or other kind of things there? It's just a question for the future. If so, there's some space that we could kind of reserve for that, to have that ready. Um, and that is, that's potentially on the capital side. So, oh, one last thing. A kitchen. So uh, the current bike center has a full service kitchen uh, for the seniors. So essentially, when the seniors would go in there on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I think at least a couple of those days, maybe all three, uh, you had a couple, co uh, two contractors that used to be long term employees, uh, Jerry and Sharon, that uh, would cook for the seniors basically. So they were just a couple hours a, a day that they would spend, you know, cooking food, get going to get the food, all that good stuff. The question is, do we still? There'll be two things. One, uh, do we want to add a kitchen to the Y building? I would think we probably would. Uh, I think there's other uses <coughs> besides that that would probably make it helpful. Um, and so we just need to find that location, which there's, when we talk, told the Y this, they were like, oh, there's pl probably two or three different locations that it could go to. So not a big concern, but it is something that we need to keep on our radar. Uh, and I think that is the, the capital stuff. So uh, I can kind of yeah. pause there. And, <clears throat> and I, I would ask that everybody kind of support this idea and at least kind of live with it for a minute and kind of think about it and come up with some questions. Um, this won't be the last time we talk about it. Um, and I would kind of like this committee to put our heads together and kind of decide our opinions, what we want to send up for our suggestions of what do we want to do with the pools. What do we kind of see a vision with, like, you know, for instance, like the indoor pools, I would like to see that. The indoor pool, see that close down, have like an auxiliary gym down there, you know, for you younger basketball kids. Because, um, like James said, the school's been great letting us use the facilities, but some of those elementary gyms are really small where some of these other little kids play. You know, so having a second option, a full size gym, a smaller gym, cheer, stuff like that, I can go in there and use it too when the weather's poor. Um, little things like that, just kind of mulling through those options quickly but well thought out I think would be good for us to send up kind of a recommendation hey this is kind of what we think you know and just kind of have our voice and say in the matter um, so yeah cool. um, so then on the on the operating side which is going to be much more dependent on the city like you know, the city administration will need to kind of make some decisions here but uh, and this is a lot shorter than the uh, right now than the capital but you know something Consider is that you know it's the current structure of the city's the recreation department and then the senior services department is that really the best way to continue to operate so right now you've got uh, they're not all filled but you've got a secretary in the uh, senior services department Debbie Simpson uh, you've got a director of the senior services which was unfilled but they were uh, potentially could be filled then you've got uh, on the recreation side, you've got a couple of kind of positions as well. And is it really effective for those to operate separately? I, I don't personally think so, but it is something to look at about whether combining those and that way you can use like Debbie Simpson's resources both in the recreation side and the senior side. Uh, and that way they, whoever the senior director is, is just sitting in the office all day answering the, or, or whoever the rec director is, is it just sitting in the office all day answering the phones. Uh, so just some like for thinking about. It. I don't know, if, you know, city administration ultimately have to make the decision, but it could be something your else committee might want to look at um, as well. Also, just kind of how is the building going to be operated from a like security standpoint and from a yeah, I guess just operational standpoint. Right now, essentially during the off hours, all these different people that have access to the facility just have a key to the door, and then all these individual rooms kind of lock, right? So. You know, you do have some kind of security risk, just somebody being in the building that shouldn't be there, but, you know, people's stuff, is kind of, they're kind of like cordoned off, so it kind of keeps it okay. What we're going to have to look at in the future is when the building's open for any kind of meetings and stuff, do we, do we have to have, do we want to have an employee there? I mean, it could just be like a, you know, a younger employee that's maybe a lifeguard or something that's just sitting at the front desk, and it has to be a, a manager, but... Um, 
how do we want to do that? And then how also do we want to operate with the exercise equipment, the racquetball court, uh, if we have the indoor pool? But I mean, it, the smart lo like logic would say it's probably better not to have it. I mean, there's a lot of liability there, and I just don't know the operating model for it, right? How it's going to work. So, um, you know, it, there's just a lot of questions that are there right now. So, I mean, I agree with Mr. Kelsch that it's probably going to be better to use it for an auxiliary space. But what's the auto run? How do we charge people? Do we charge people to come and use the equipment and stuff? Do we, you know, there's just a lot of questions there that we don't have today. Uh, and potentially, you know, in the past we've had like a team room uh, where at our rec center. I don't know. Uh, maybe Mr. Dracy or Mr. Kelsch, you all might remember. But yeah, upstairs. First, yeah, so all you, the way up top. Is that talking about that big open space up top? Well, I mean, like, um, didn't the city run one at one of their rec spaces, like either at the pool or at the... I know, I know back when I was way younger down here in Nord, they used to have the back on the block thing. It was like a weekend night or Wednesday night or something in the summer where we'd come there, use the gym, swim inside, use the big room up top to kind of hang out and... I'm not sure if that's what. No, I, mean, I don't about. know. I, I just I wasn't sure if they used to have like spaces that like teenagers could hang out at. Um, yeah, back no, in the I don't. Day, I don't back think so. the city used to have you know a lot of yeah. things. So. I mean, it would be kind of cool to have some like a little game room with some beanbag chairs in there and just you know, not, obviously probably not the state of the art stuff, but something kids <sighs> can come hang out at if they're not at the parks or. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got a message that the team room was at Waterworks. It was oh. a rec room. Cool. Excellent. Uh, Thank you. Uh, that was a great quick response. There. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's just lots of opportunities, I think, that this one presents uh, that we don't have. And, and just kind of how this came about, like the Y, like when I found out the Y was closing, uh, one of the senior level members that worked at the Y actually lives here in Norwood. I actually went over, like, basically walked by her house, was going to knock on her door, but she was sitting on her porch, so that was great. And I was like, hey, can you, like, help us here? Like, can you have, what, could, what could a partnership look like? And they were, like, excited from the beginning. Like, the Y yeah. was super excited about this. Uh, because they want to see the building continue to be used. So um, we're still trying to figure out what that might look like, but like I said, I just want to bring that to you, uh, to your committee, so that you all kind of knew what was being thought about. I, I, I'm glad that uh, you guys are thinking about this. I think it's very cool, and obviously there's a lot of, of the how much is this going to cost still to come. Totally yeah. hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's okay to not have all that answered right now. Hmm. Um, that said, is, a, is there like a, a timing? Because um, I imagine if the Y got some sort of opportunity that moved faster than the city, they may take it. Did they talk to you about how it's like, you know, you have six months to come up with this plan or did was it just kind of like a, well, let's ideate together? What was, what did that, what was that like from a timing perspective? Yeah, I think that they would, so they definitely don't want to not have a decision, like they don't want to have this building still at the end of next year and really and not know year. what's going to happen with it. Um, I think the goal is to, uh, there's still like discussions happening, but it sounds like the goal is for like next spring is to have potential like transfer of ownership at some point next spring. And um, yeah, and, and it wouldn't be ready for the city to use at that exact point, right? Like we'd have construction stuff that'd have to get done, the ADA, some of the ADA stuff. But uh, I'm thinking like early next year to, to next summer, kind of really getting in full swing of getting that ready to go so we could open up fully by uh, either winter or early 2022. So that, that would be kind of just the overall vision that I can see in my head, but there's a lot of things that can bring up. Uh, yeah. And so talking about the cost, I mean, definitely there's going to be like costs involved in this for sure. Uh, the positives are that the building is it's a sound structure, like the building's sound. There's not like major, there's not major leaks right now everywhere like we're seeing at the community center. You know, it's not like you have to replace a bunch of windows which really need to be replaced right now at the community center. Uh, it'll really just kind of depend on how the city wants to use it. Um, so there will be, in, in like the outdoor pool, it doesn't have to be filled in immediately, right? Like that could be a, a project whatever. But with the, kind of the, the position of the city, really in a decent position right now that we could actually we could do a, some some capital improvement type things at this, you know, make this move that would really set us up better for the long term. And I think it's an opportunity. Like I think the timing of it is perfect. I think the the city's, you know, we're in a financial situation. Like I said, so I mean, we can't take on a million dollar a year expense, right? But we could possibly take on a couple projects that could be, you know, 
somewhat more than you know maybe a couple hundred like maybe a hundred two hundred thousand dollar project right uh, here and there to make this thing ready so that we can use that for the future. So uh, another question for either one of you: uh, it, Is it a, a situation where a plan could be in place and transfer of ownership could exist, and we don't do anything for a year? My, the reason I'm saying that is because um, I think uh, there's a lot for a, hundred, a couple reasons. There's a lot of we think we're okay, but we might not be. And there's a I'm personally wanting to wait uh, quite a few more months to see how this pans out, um, particularly on like taxation and things like that. How how our, our revenue is going to come in. So can we transfer? I heard someone say like we we'll give it to you for a dang dollar and we sit and not spend anything and just evaluate, if that could exist, that sounds awesome because then we could have, we could game plan, continue to strategize without actually obligating ourselves to anything. Um, knowing that we probably want to move forward, we just get the luxury of, let's just, you know, find, see how the next, you know, couple quarters goes. That's not as exciting, but... It, yeah, I mean, I think that's a smart idea. I don't know. I think uh, Mr. Bonds will probably have more of that kind of knowledge, but I think that, that is something that, it, I, to me, that's kind of the way it would... I, it looks like it would work because there's going to be some updates there uh, just to get it kind of up to snuff and better. So I don't think that we would attack everything all at once. Well, you know, what I'm I, saying is can you... <laughs> I don't even know if you can. Like, would they give it to us for... A very inexpensive transfer price for transfer of ownership, or would it cost money just to get the dang thing? Yeah. I, I'm just what I'm trying to figure out. So I think we'll know more in the next few weeks. But okay. I mean, the offer has been made. Like, look, uh, we'll we'll just take we can take over the building. We'll start paying the utilities, whatever. You know, if you want to transfer it sooner rather than later, I mean, we'll we'll take care of it, and uh, and we can work all this stuff out. I mean, the offers, but I mean, to me, it'd be better to have the asset now than not have it, right? So. Yeah. That's what I'm all about, just kind of getting it and going, and then we can get all the stuff worked out. But um, the offer's been made. We will see. Uh, we'll know more, like I said, the next couple of weeks about it. I think council would have to vote on that, anyways. But I think that is a potential. Uh, I think once we have it, though, I think, and once we get all of council in there looking at it, and, and anytime anybody wants to take a tour of it, by the way, uh, that can be arranged very easily. Um, I think once we really get in there, I think honestly we're going to realize, dude, this is. Why are we even talking about the old building? We need to get in here. Like, I, I think we're gonna really want to get in there. Oh, I, I, I want you both to know. I'm, I'm really. I think it's, a, I think it's cool you guys are doing what yeah. you're doing, and I think okay. presenting here and bringing this forward is awesome. And, um, I, I, and in visiting it, I probably know how I'm gonna feel. I say this is great. I want everything tomorrow. It's just I, I'd love if over the next couple weeks, as you figure out what transfer ownership looks like, if you could yeah. explicitly ask. You know, is there a world where we take ownership and maybe just have the expenses of maintenance, utilities, and yeah. sit on it? Yeah. Fis fiscal responsibility. Just, yeah. Can we sit on this thing for up to six months, maybe longer, and nothing really happen other than the cost of utilities and things yeah, like that? I think it's also worth looking into the fact that some of the capital things needed probably could get grant money for them. Maybe. Yeah. ADA accessibility plus that kitchen. Probably just I, I can't I can only imagine that there's grant money for that sort of thing out there that that maybe it's matching grant money but but wouldn't be a, a huge drain on us that we could get going on sooner rather than later even without tapping into and doesn't that sound attractive things. I bet everyone could be on board with that that right. sounds really safe and slow and huh. and, and, right. and thoughtful cover off I don't know one, one, wor one word comes to mind when and I wrote it down on the piece of paper and that was uh, ka -ching. I yeah. just keep you seeing dollar signs go bit? up you're, you're, well, here's the deal. The, the mean, rec center we have now is a it's a guaranteed. No, I, I, we've got I, to replace the roof. We've got to yeah. replace the windows. I, I get I mean, you. And to do I, it. Trust me, I'm all for. I understand that. And I already thought we're about the thoughts and plans. It, we're cutting an important service, and this this, this is all about I, saving money. Now Matt, we're this not is one hand does not have nothing to do with the other on this one, dude. This we're is we're talking solely money. about parks here. We're not talking about that. Trust me, I'm with you on that. But we're talking about parks and rec. We're talking about something that could be a money pet, though. I mean, we could just close. We could just have no center. rec center. Yeah, that's what that's what we're getting say, at, man. Like our rec center we have now is piss poor, man. It is falling apart. You know what I mean? Like us getting that gym done in there was great. We needed it, but it was kind of like, uh, you know, the rec center we have now is not gonna cut it. It's not that great. 
we're just going to be pouring more money into that likely than we would this. We don't really have the money right now to do a brand new state of the art rec center, which would be amazing. I'm all for if anybody wants to jump on that. <laughs> if this doesn't work out, I mean, but, wait, there's grants out there for that. Well, I, for for a multi million dollar rec facility? Well, yeah, I don't think so. That's not. I mean, yeah, there's grants, but everything. there's well, grants, could you but use that same logic for this. Mm -hmm. Couldn't you use that exact same logic for this? Oh, you can. No. You could. Uh, okay. This is this is a win. I don't quite understand. We get the property, we sit on it for a while, we see what we got to do, we kind of get that plan together, and it, it's a win. And I just don't see where we lose on it. The only Personally. way we would lose, and I think it's worth the only way to lose if it costs us quite a bit of money to hope and wait. And I, we don't know that answer. And I think you're doing a great job of trying to work with them and appreciate your effort. Uh, but uh, let's find that out, and then we can discuss it again. But if there's a world where it doesn't, the cost of sitting and waiting and letting some of this, the obvious question marks play out is not that high, yeah. then, then I, am, I really am like, well, that's a pretty good opportunity. That's, yeah. Then the, co the pay to play is not that high. You know? That's a great point. That's a great point. I should have said one other thing when you asked about like cost and sitting. So we really can't do any of these big projects anyways until we pass a new financial recovery plan because the money we've got to allocate money for it in the recovery plan. So we'll have all the we'll have all the discussions, you know, at that time because well, as much as the administration and the, um, the supervisor will let us, but you know you know how that goes. We'll have all the discussions at that time to be able to uh, you know, fit, slot things in or not slot things in. Uh, and I think that your all's next uh, agenda item too will probably be, you know, it could be relevant at the, you know, as things move forward. If they yeah. move forward so. Well, I, and it, I did want to change it. It's not parks and recreation. This is just parks that we're going to be talking about tonight. But, but yeah, in the future, definitely. We'll have a say in all this and kind of how it goes. Thank you both. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Bonzo. So moving on to the fourth agenda item is the 2021 Parks and Recreation Capital Improvement Plan. Um, I was trying to print it. However, uh, my def my printer defeated me in my knowledge of printing things. So I emailed out to you guys earlier. Sorry for the short notice on that because um, I'm sure some of you guys would have brought your laptops with you to look at it. Um, but our last meeting, um, it was just Mr. Bernardo and I having a discussion about some of these items and all I changed so I want to highlight too that because I think Mr. Thompson you're currently looking at it right yeah that the high, the change I made is they're on red no dollar amount of the total currently that was projected already has changed the bottom baseline number is the same and what I did was at the very top it was um, replacing the lights at Waterworks baseball fields one three and four after talking to Clint Zimmerman, um, Waterworks 1 lights up really nice. Waterworks 4 lights up, but not that bright. Like, not as many. Some of the bulbs need replacing that. And uh, the wiring at the poles and that is, is gone pretty bad. It's, it's pretty old uh, wiring. That's why it was on there. Uh, Waterworks 3 currently, I don't think, has lights. So, that's something that would be a big project. But, I'm thinking, and he thinks it would be a good idea as well. That we replace the fencing and install concrete, poured concrete dugouts at Waterworks 1, 3, and 4, creating nicer ball fields there, um, less drainage issues, a nice uniform look. And the dugouts there, the reason I'm talking poured concrete dugouts is they kind of hump down and they get really muddy and really just like puddles. Like people can't use it. You got kids like 10 feet back behind the dugout fence. And it would just be a really nice add-on to the theme of us trying to get Waterworks, which is one of our like center parks, and you get the stadium, you got the ball fields, the basketball courts, you know, improving that, and it also brings some kind of financial benefit to the city. You know, we can have we can host some select baseball tournaments where we have quite a few kids in the North that do play select, and some people coach select, and they have some connects there where we can do that. Maybe host some softball tournaments. Um, you know, nice potential for our rec department and uh, the future of that to host like kickball leagues and stuff like that on some nice new new fields we can take advantage of and then look at lighting later. Okay. So, so, we're not, you're, so you're kind of swapping. Yeah, so what all I did, yeah. So essentially all I did was 
in the description of the line item, the suggestion of that money is changed it to replace and install poured concrete dugouts, waterworks one, three, and four. Got it. Same amount of money there and doing that. And then talking to Clint, I was going to change it, but I didn't want to move the money to 2021 because it raised that. But there's $15,000 there for master, our master electric light panel at Waterworks where uh, Mr. Zimmerman said, hey, that's that's good, that's done. So I'm not sure why that's there. Um, but I can get with um, Jim Stith and kind of see and if we can maybe move that money into that 125 just to have a buffer. Or some of the bulb replacements that yep. we talked yep. about. Yeah, so some essentially of I, for, for you guys, uh, the last meeting uh, was all around, we had all this money for lighting but one, the lighting apparently wasn't as bad. It's not great, but it could limp. Uh -huh. And actually, yeah. it was better. we thought it was limping. We found it was actually better than limping. It just yeah. wasn't super stable. Um, whereas for the same amount of money, you could make stuff look good. Yeah. And then shine a light, and then improve the lighting on stuff that looks good. Yeah. I think, what did you say? Yeah. Put a spotlight on stuff that doesn't look very good. Yeah. It's not shine a, great a light on crap. Look at our crappy field. So, yeah. And I, that resonated with me. He hasn't. I thought it was a great proposal, and he hasn't done anything other than reprioritize the timing yeah. of how we improve that space. Yeah. So yeah. I didn't feel it yeah. was a. And, and I'm, and I'm going to run this up the ladder to the big guy and see what he thinks. And um, you know, Clint was talking about you know my timeline that I would love to see this done. Obviously, and I like to go big or go home is you know start working on this right in the beginning of January, February, get it done by April um, before opening day for our Lily here. Is it doable? Yeah. Is it plausible? We're starting to feel maybe, maybe not. Maybe parts so, of it. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be a huge endeavor and a lot of planning. Um, if we can't do it, worst case, if we can't do it prior, worst case scenario, right after in the summer, we, we work on it and get it done. So at least, you know, and we're not being utilized where uh, families and kids, they come see, hey, man, you know, next year we're going to have something really awesome down here. So. Best case scenario, maybe probably a miracle scenario is we can get it done before. Worst case scenario, after. If uh, you know the administration likes the project and proposal and wants to move forward with that. Um, and then we also discussed there was a hundred thousand for new playground equipment, um, where we, we kind of discussed breaking that up and better serving, you know residents to see hey this is it's going to be used for this not just a vague line item of new playground equipment so i did was for and that was a hundred thousand dollars for 2021 when i broke it up to is hunter part 40 which is going to cover the walking path the workout equipment along the walking path the play sets are already paid for the grant we had to flip flop that phase which i discussed at a previous yeah. committee meeting mm -hmm. um that's going to pay for almost like everything else and then there's thirty thousand each for Park 1 and Park 2 of the park renovation plan that we're going to use with that park audit. And I went a step further and I wish you had it on your phone because you're going to like this. So, <laughs> like I said, bigger, bigger go home. You know, I earn my money, man. So, park, Hunter Park, 40, <laughs> Park 1, 30, Park 2, 30 for 2021. For 2022, and this is money that was already there for like park upgrades to be named. Park, and I'm just like, no, let's do something special with it so people can see it. Um, some of these groups like Elevations, Nord Together, those people that want to go get grants. Here's our here's our plan. Here's what we have spent for that year. You got time to go find grants and bring some money to the table and help us out. So for 2022, we have parks three and park four of the park renovation plan with twenty thousand dollars that year for each 2023 parks five and six with twenty thousand for each 2024 park seven and eight for ten thousand each and then 2025 parks nine and ten for ten thousand each and Obviously, it trickles down because we don't know exactly what we're going to have there yet. Also, I like that as my thoughts are we're not just going to go get a bunch of grants right now, today, tomorrow, for next year. You know what I mean? It's going to take time. There's a process. Front load it cost-wise. We're going to have to brunt some of that cost to get some of these parks done. And there's a little bit more money there. Not saying anybody cannot get grants. I'm sure they can. But 
there's a little bit more money there, a little bit more meat on the bone to attack some of these parks because the ones we're going to be hitting first are the ones that are terrible, the ones that need the most stuff. As Sorry to interrupt you, but as stated by an audit and not these individuals yeah. sitting in the room. Yeah, we're not going to start picking really and, you know, part of and, and if for some reason, and, and, and we don't have to go by the audit, but like we said, we talked about before, we want to use that audit to try to put it in order. And if for some reason we're going to bump this park up to here over this one, we would discuss that and it would be open for everybody to see. But what I've done is plan this out through 2025 to attack every park that's going to be on that audit. It's here, people can see it, we're doing it. And my thought is, as we progress out, maybe the city is gonna, only gonna need to have a smaller um, money stake in that because we can get more grants or some of those parks might not need as much. And being a couple years out, we can always you know, come that year, the year, the year before this time, like we're looking at 2021, kind of look and say, hey, we got an extra 10,000 here, let's throw that over there into those and just kind of, and we'll be able to see what parks are coming up so we can look and say, hey, or future accounts can look and say, hey, you know, this park needs a little bit more or vice versa. Yeah, and there. I think Mrs. Uh, Dr. Uh, Bar Tosik, I think her name, um, she made the comment, I, re I remembered back in the spring or early, late winter, she was like, Obviously, the stuff that has the most need means the most upfront money. Presumably, yep. if it has less need, even three years from now, maybe it only needs garbage cans, roof repair, and bathroom paint jobs, something like that. That's only a couple of ten thousand no. dollars. But your hot and heavy, run down, messed up, you know, playground, something like that. That needs your forty thousand today. Mm -hmm. So that waterfall that you have, where it draws yeah. down. Uh, the dollar over the years lines up with her comment. Yeah, her and I mean, if you're really wanting to look at it, like, so this 10 parks, this 10 parks got done, 100 parks are going to be completed, so they're kind of at the really tail end there after they're done. So we're t trickling down by that point in time. Maybe they just only need a couple maintenance and updated it, yeah. items. Yeah. And there's actually, there's money here too per year as park upgrades we name, which I'm, I want to kind of rename that, um, you know, kind of like almost emergency stuff. You know, somebody broke some equipment or something fails sooner than we thought it would or we find something we didn't know we needed, like some more mulch or sort something like, like that. General that fund for yeah, it, yeah, like, like a, hey, he, we have it, go get it. Uh, yeah. we, we need these things to have them on hand. Uh, the playground borders. There's a lot of playgrounds that don't have the borders. I know Clint's looking into stuff like that, extra mulch to just yeah. to keep keep our level of mulch at certain, the, the right level so, you know, it's not a liability issue. We have the borders keeping everything in keeping kids safe keeping everything in there yeah yeah something i want to point out and i what I, I told him i like what you're you're doing i want us to consider and i don't know if maybe it's partnering m more with the the parks group that's doing the audits and stuff yeah but i think we also need to think of of, of actual park planning because even when we decide what we want to do and like what we're doing with hunter you've done a great job you know putting together as best as we can but I, I sometimes think it's like what would have happened if we would have got somebody who was a park planner to yeah. tell us the best way to do what we wanted to do there yeah. and uh and so as we get ready to to fix these these parks up to 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 get some some i guess professional design opinion on how best to make sure that that we're we're doing the best that we can with it too. Yeah, I mean, and you know, part I, of it could be in that money, and I, oh, it might even be somebody who can volunteer the service or something. But I yeah, just, I mean, I you know, I, I just think um, we we kind of want these to move quickly. As long as we can move it quickly with that process and having that extra eye or having that extra opinion, I'm all for it. Yeah, um, I still want to move quickly too. I just yeah, want to. We, we we have a need, we have a desire to move quickly. We just need to do that and not plan for six to nine months. Not saying that's how it would be, but that's what. Right. I want to avoid personally and having that plan having that list and knowing what's coming up will that allow okay. some of these groups say you know that want to be involved but necessarily they're just striking out on grants but hey we want to be involved you know we'll put together the survey we'll, we'll go out here and hustle and do legwork so that you guys know hey this is what everybody wants there in advance to it coming up more than more than happy for that that's great I think that would be awesome yeah so
Cool. I think it looks cool. I, have yeah. a, I mean, if anybody else has any other suggestions too for like this year, next year, and um, what Sith is talking about too is doing like 2022, 20, 23, 24, 25, just adding stuff in if, as we see it. So, anybody has any suggestions or things that they think could be popping up then, let me know. Plug them in. Cool. Thanks. And I want to hit on that everything that wasn't done this year is moving over. Make sure, like we talked about, I and mean, that's already was set up before I even got it. Yeah, we, we talked last week. Yeah. Um, I had a non cap improvement plan when you're finished. Is that, is that, a, yeah, that's that fine, yeah. Um, we also talked, you asked me, uh, when we met a couple weeks ago, um, Burwood, uh, that starts Monday. So awesome. They're going to break into the ground Monday. So awesome. And yeah, that's for the drainage. Nice little win. Uh, yeah. so thanks, uh, Mr. Murphy, Mr. Zimmerman, uh, yeah. for staying on that, even as weather is less than ideal. Um, they got on the schedule. It's, it's set. Took a little bit to do that, uh, but they're Monday. So there you go. That's great. All right. Does anybody else have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions? Good job. Thank you. All right. With that, we'll adjourn this Parks, Recreation, Public Spaces Committee meeting.